friends, it's Cory from Hey Let's Make Stuff, and in today's video, I am sharing all about the new Glowforge Aura, which is an entry-level laser machine, and I am really excited to share it with you. I know it feels like I have been talking all about all sorts of new machines and software lately, but apparently this is just the time that things are launched, so here is another video about another new machine that you may want. I'm really sorry if I'm making you spend all your money, but um, I'm really excited to share this little Glowforge with you because I think it is a really good entry laser if you want to get into laser cutting. So in this video, we're going to go over sort of all the parts of this machine, how it works, what it can cut. Um, I'm going to give you some pros, some cons, and then you can make the best choice for your needs and your space and your budget. Let's start by talking about the type of laser inside the Glowforge Aura. So there are sort of two types of lasers that most laser machines come in if you want to buy one off the market. So the big Glowforge machines, um, I'm going to call them their flagship machines, I have a Glowforge Pro, have a CO2 laser. And this smaller machine has a diode laser. So I'm not gonna go into the science of what those mean. Um, I couldn't if I tried. Um, but basically a CO2 laser is a much more powerful laser than a diode laser. So while the CO2 laser is much more powerful, the diode laser is much more economical, meaning that they can put it in a smaller machine like this and make it at a much more um, attractive price to a lot of crafters. So if we're talking wattages here, my Glowforge Pro is a 45 watt CO2 laser. This is a six watt diode laser. Um, so you can tell even just by the numbers that there is a significant difference between 45 and six. And yes, that means that this machine has quite a bit less power. That doesn't mean you won't be able to cut a wide variety of materials on this machine. It just means you will be a little bit more limited in what you can cut, especially when it comes to thickness and um, types of acrylic, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. And also it's much slower. Additionally, there is also a difference in precision when it comes to a a CO2 laser versus a diode laser. A CO2 laser can do much more precise engraving. This actually gets really precise and I'm really happy with it, but I'm not also a professional laser cutter. Like I'm not looking at every single, you know, micron of detail. Um, so this, while this does engrave really nicely, the CO2 laser is probably gonna engrave a little bit better. Um, but if you're just making crafts or things to sell, you know, at your local market, this is probably gonna do it for you. The Glowforge Aura was very easy to set up. So I just pulled it out of the box and it was almost ready to go. I pulled a few parts out of the inside. I connected the laser head, um, put on the vent pipe because this does need to be vented, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Um, and I was basically ready to go. This only weighs 19 pounds. My Glowforge Pro weighs like 70 pounds. <laughs> so this is so much more mobile. I can move it all over my craft room. Um, I have moved it to a couple different places as I've tried to figure out where it's gonna live permanently, um, but it's very easy to move and nobody should have a problem unboxing it. Speaking of venting, so all laser machines need to be vented, um, which means that it's going to produce fumes and smoke that need to be like not going into your lungs if possible. So um, the Glowforge Aura is vented through a vent pipe on the back and there are two options here. You can vent it um, just out the door or out a window. That's actually what I do with my Glowforge Pro. I don't have a filter for it. Um, but with this Glowforge machine, you can also buy a personal filter um, and you can just plug basically the end of the vent pipe into the filter and it will pull out all those smoke and fumes as you're cutting. Now to say I really like this filter. Um, I don't have a filter on my big one and now I'm like, maybe I should get one um, because it really um, cuts down on the smell. I feel like they've done a really good job of keeping this sort of an enclosed system. Um, so I don't get a lot of really, really smelly projects like I do with my Glowforge Pro. That also being said, that thing's cutting a lot faster um, and a lot thicker materials. So it's probably just creating a lot more smoke and fumes than the diode laser is anyway. But I have found that um, the smell and this, you know, like laser stuff can just stink. This one really doesn't, like I can get like just a general whiff of what I'm doing, um, but really I feel like it is well contained to this and the filter. Not to mention that the filter itself is Wi-Fi connected to this machine, so it only runs when the machine is running. The filter is not exactly quiet, it's not super loud, um, but it does make some noise, so it's actually really nice that the second that the machine is done cutting, it basically kind of finishes its cycle and then it turns off, so you don't have this very loud filter running all the time. Back to the size and dimensions, I think it's about 22 inches wide and 21 inches deep, might be switched on those. Um, but you do need at least six inches in the back for this vent pipe. Um, so it, it will sit on a standard table, um, but do know that it is a little bit deeper than some of the other machines that you may have. If you're a Cricut user, you will need a little bit more space to work this machine. Um, you do need about 18 inches above the machine itself to be able to open the lid and access your projects. Getting this connected to Wi-Fi should be pretty easy, but I've actually had a little bit of a struggle with it. And I think that's because it's my internet, not the machine. I've had issues getting my Glowforge con Pro connected as well. That one now is connected and seems to be working really well. This one I keep losing connectivity and I keep having to add, um, add it back on. It's not 
the worst thing ever. It's just a pain to have to be like, oh, I have to reconnect each time. So I am gonna chat with the Glowforge team and see if I can get that worked out. I'm also gonna chat with my amazing IT husband to see if we can get some better internet out here in my studio um, because I think that it's my issue, not the machine's issue. I did want to point it out though, just in case you are having issues, you know you're not alone. Um, go ahead and reach out to the Glowforge support desk and hopefully they can help you out. Now let's talk about the anatomy of the machine. So it has this lid here and you're going to open it up and then you'll have access to the bed, which is where you're going to place your materials. At the bottom of the bed is the crumb tray, which is just sort of a uh, metal plate that has some, you know, little honeycomb cutouts. This is because when you are laser cutting, um, not engraving, but cutting, you need the airflow underneath your project um, so that you don't get a whole bunch of charring and flare ups and all sorts of other things that you definitely don't want. So the crumb tray goes in there and it also will drop through any small crumbs that you have. Um, so I cut some earrings and all the little holes where you would put the um, jewelry findings, all of that fell through. You can easily remove this crumb tray and then I just take a vacuum to it every once in a while to vacuum up all the little crumbs that uh, live under there. You may also end up with some residue on your crumb tray um, after cutting, and that's totally fine. You can kind of leave it as is if you want, but if it gets really bad, you can totally clean it. Um, I already cleaned mine just so I could take photos of it, um, and I used a Magic Clean or Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, and it worked really well. The lid itself, you'll notice, is orange, and it's sort of like a welder's helmet because you're looking directly at a laser. Don't want to do that. You can look at it through the orange lid of this machine, and you can look right at it, make sure it's working um, without you know, ruining your eyes. I like this. My Glowforge Pro doesn't have this and I'm constantly telling my boys, don't look at the laser. Um, so this one makes it a lot easier to actually look at your project and see what's going on. Inside the lid, there is a camera and this little camera, I think it's eight megapixels. It will take a picture of your material so that you can accurately place your, um, your images on your material and get a good cut. I wouldn't say it's the best camera ever, but it does the job. The laser module itself sits on two rails that go back and forth, and that's basically how the laser will move around um, your machine. You will need to um, like install that laser. It literally just goes in with magnets. It's really easy, but do be careful when unpacking your machine. Um, the laser head and the silver tape cable that it's attached to are kind of embedded in a piece of styrofoam, and you don't want to like go pulling that out because it is attached to the machine. So just be careful when you're unboxing it that you pull the Glowforge laser head out of that packing material before sort of yanking it out of the box. Then there's a button here that you will use to start your project. You will also use this button to connect to Wi-Fi. Like I've said, had to press it a lot. Um, and then on the sides of the machine, which I think is really cool, are these little pass-throughs. So this means that what fits in the bed of the machine generally is 12 by 12. You basically have 12 inches of room from the top to the bottom and side to side. But if you're using these pass-throughs and there's one on each side, you can use material of any length as long as it's no more than 12 inches tall. Um, which means that you can use much wider materials. So I can fit like standard Glowforge materials that wouldn't fit just in the bed. I can use those in this machine. And I'm hoping to have a video on how to use the pass-through soon, um, but just know that it does have that, um, which I think is a really great feature for such a small compact laser cutter. And then finally, there's a vent pipe in the back and the cord. There's actually no on button for this machine. Once you plug it in, it turns on. So you may wanna unplug it when you leave the room if you want. It will go to sleep as well, but I don't know, I really like having my machines like off before I leave the room, so I tend to unplug it, but it will go to sleep if you leave it for too long. Compared to my Glowforge Pro, this is not very loud, but it does make some noise. Like I don't think I would run it necessarily near where my kids were napping when they were little. Um, it's really the filter that actually makes a little bit more noise than the machine itself. Um, so if you're venting it out of a window, I think it would be actually considerably quieter, um, but that filter, it's pulling all of those chemicals and things into the filter itself, so it does make some noise. Next, let's talk about materials. So I'm gonna start with proof grade materials. Proof grade materials are basically materials that Glowforge makes and has qualified. They have settings that pretty much always work for me in the Glowforge app, which I think is amazing because I have another diode laser and I have struggled much more on the materials there. It's required a lot more testing. Their materials aren't quite as flat as the Glowforge materials. Um, I find that although they are a little bit more expensive, they do cut really well. You can, of course, use non-proof grade materials, and I'll cover that in just a minute. So to start, you probably want to cut wood. Most people do. Now, it's hard for me to tell you what the colors of these are because they have a masking on, which um, prevents the wood itself from charring. Um, but I have cherry and uh, basswood plywood, a light maple plywood, and a light walnut plywood. I also have some medium plywood here, which um, should work, but I have not actually done the medium one yet. Um, so I will be honest there, I have not cut these yet, but I have cut all four of the light plywoods and all of them cut beautifully. So I have um, a set of coasters I've made here that have all three, or all four. 
So we'll start, this is the basswood. This is actually my least favorite. I think it's actually the cheapest, but it feels the cheapest. It just doesn't feel like it has quite the, um, like precise engraving as these other three materials. And I also feel like it ends up with a feeling of like a little bit of a residue. Um, so I did clean it off with a little bit of that magic eraser sponge, um, which you can use on wood, but don't use it on acrylic. Um, but I mean, it worked really well, but just not quite as well as these three. So similarly colored to that is the light maple. And I just really like this. I think it's really pretty. It's a great light colored wood and it engraves beautifully. Next up is the cherry, which is a sort of medium color, really pretty. And then my actual favorite is this walnut, which I have used in the past on my other Glowforge and I just love it. I made some keychains um, with my boy's handwriting, which I just thought was such a, I don't know, it was such a great gift for my husband. Um, I'll go ahead and link to it down in the description below so you can see, but this is actually my favorite. Next up is veneer. So I've got some maple veneer, cherry veneer, and walnut veneer. Again, they have the mask on them so you can't see. I cut the cherry veneer here, um, a little um, leaf, and it has a sticky back. So you can peel this off and stick it to whatever you'd like. So for this project, I ran out of time, but I was gonna make an ornament. Um, so it had like an offset that I made in the Glowforge app with a little hole. I was gonna turn it into a little ornament, ran out of time. Um, but the veneer is kind of a fun product. I don't know how many uses there are, um, but it really does cut beautifully. And I really like that it has that sticky back already on it so that you can use it in a variety of projects. And then there's acrylic. And acrylic can be kind of one of those things that may make or break your choice on whether or not you wanna get a diode laser versus a CO2 laser. So I have a bunch of colors here um, that I have cut on the Aura. We've got a teal, a black, uh, red, orange, purple, and green, right? Um, and they're all fairly standard colors. Um, if you know what I mean. So like none of these minus the teal is really like a hey, let's make stuff color. <laughs> um, however, they cut beautifully. So I cut these cute little um, leaf earrings out of the green and just added the little earring findings. They cut, I mean, super well and super cute. The diode laser is gonna struggle with some other materials, especially when they're not from Glowforge because Glowforge has tested and tested and tested these to make sure that they work. So I tried cutting, let's see, I'm gonna find it. I think it's buried in here. So I tried cutting a darker teal because I figured if it can cut the light teal, it should be able to cut this sort of darker teal color. And you can see here that I had to do a lot of testing to be able to get it to cut through. And once I found a setting that I liked, I tried making some earrings and it still didn't cut all the way through. And I don't know if it's that this is the, I mean, this is laser ready material, so it should work really well. Um, but I think it's because they have literally tested this so many times and figured out the exact teal that will work in here. I haven't tested any other colors yet, but I do know that clear will not work in a diode laser unless you either hack it, or I think there are some companies that are trying to figure out how to cut clear with a diode laser. Maybe Glowforge is working on it, I have no idea. Um, but I know that it's something that so many people wanna cut is clear acrylic, and it's just not possible without a hack. And even then it doesn't cut great as far as I understand. I have not done it, so I'm not gonna say it's not possible, um, but I knew, do know that a diode laser is not strong enough to just easily cut clear acrylic and you're gonna have to do some sort of hack or something else with it. I do have a bunch of other colors of acrylic I'm planning on testing. I'm also working on a video on basically how to test materials in any type of laser, so stay tuned for that. Um, but if I do find some other colors that will work in this, I will probably be sharing it on my Instagram stories. So go ahead and go to the description, follow me there, and I will do some follow-up on some testing I'm gonna do with different colors of acrylic. And then finally, you can cut iron-on with this machine, which is really interesting. So I've got a couple pieces here. This is Glowforge iron-on. I've got red, green, and blue, again, very standard colors. I have also have black and white, as well as some shimmer colors. Um, it's got silver, gold, and pink in here. Um, so it's still not a huge variety. Um, and there's something special about this iron-on, and that is that it contains no actual vinyl. It contains no plastic um, that can be melted by this machine. You only wanna use laser-ready materials inside the Glowforge. This Glowforge, the other Glowforge, any laser cutter. You don't wanna cut plastic that's not designed to be cut by a laser because it will create fumes, it will melt, it'll cause all sorts of problems, and it can actually ruin your machine. So I have this iron-on. This is the other thing I have not tested yet. I'm just run out of time. I'm going out of town tomorrow, and I wanted to get this video done. Um, and I also didn't want to say this is great iron-on until I had a chance to wash it. So I will go ahead and work on testing this. Um, I may do a full video 
for it. May just put it on my Instagram stories. We'll see. Um, but I do want to do some more testing before I'm like, this is great iron on. Um, after working with iron on with my Cricut for 10 years, I feel like I'm getting better at saying this is good and this is not so great. So I wanted to test it before I was like, hey, this is awesome. So stay tuned for that as well. Like I said before, there is a mask on most of these materials. You can see it on the back here of this cherry plywood. Um, you can see the charring a little bit here. And basically the mask is protecting your wood from the actual charring. So you'll peel this off and your wood will be perfect underneath. Now, peeling off masking is not my favorite. After a while, I can kind of like, you know, you get your thumbnail in there and you start to peel it up. There are a couple methods I just wanted to share really quickly for peeling up this masking. My favorite, is a plastic razor blade. So you can buy these on Amazon, I'll link to them below, um, and they're, you can replace them really easily. The pack I got came with like 100 blades and I'm on like blade number six now. So it's really easy. You can just stick that under there, get it to push up. I mean, I just stabbed my hand and it didn't hurt at all because it's plastic. And then you can peel off that masking, here we go, to reveal your project underneath. Can't really do this facing the camera. There you go. So you can see that that mask like protected the wood from all that charring. Um, it's very hard to do when I'm not looking at it. <laughs> there we go. Um, and you can see that the, the wood is very clean underneath. Now I will say with my other diode laser, that sometimes I don't feel like I even need to mask because it's just such not a powerful laser. Um, so if you're cutting a lot of things and the um, taking off that mask is taking forever, I might do some tests just to see how well um, it cuts um, to see how much it chars. Um, because if it's not charring your wood, peel off that mask in, a, in just one big piece instead of having to pull it off all of these itty bitty tiny pieces. I haven't tested that with this machine, but I cut things unmasked all the time in my other diode laser, so I think this would probably be the same. Any laser is just test, test, test. I feel like there is so much testing involved in so many of the crafts that I do, sublimation is another one, um, that require just a lot of testing. So know that you may go through some materials. The good news is the proof grade materials have cut perfectly for me so far. Um, like I said, with my other diode laser, they had some materials and I, I, had, I struggled a little bit because the materials bowed a little bit and the settings weren't quite right. But I do feel like Glowforge really has dialed in those settings in a way that no other machine maker has. So that's one of the reasons I think it's really good for beginners. So you can grab one of these sheets of wood or acrylic and make your project basically without any work. But if you do want to cut non-proof grade materials, you will probably need to do some testing. You can test cutting things without that mask, like I mentioned. Um, just know that you need to go through a little bit of material to get that perfect cut. And then once you figured it out, once you figured out your power settings, your speed settings, how many passes it's going to take, write it down. Um, I just have a Google spreadsheet where I'm just starting to track all of the things that are not proof grade so that I can easily know the next time I go to make that particular material, the settings I used last time that worked. I'm not gonna show you it here um, because I am working on another video for it, but the Glowforge app, um, you must use it to run this machine. And I will say the Glowforge app is a basic, very basic, very, very basic. Um, basically upload and cut. They have some small things that you can do, adding shapes, there is an offset, there is sort of a magic AI tool in there so you can kind of uh, put in an AI prompt and it can give you an engraving that you like. I haven't really played around with it too much. But overall, it's gonna be a, a software right now that you just sort of upload and you know change basic sizing and that sort of thing. But for now, it's just gonna be a software where you upload, maybe change some basic sizing. Um, in there, you can change from a cut to an engrave to a score. Um, but other than that, you're probably gonna wanna do most of your designing outside of the app. Speaking of cutting and engraving and scoring, so cutting is obviously what you would imagine it is. It's cutting around the edge of your design. This here is around the edge and then it has these little cutouts. Engraving is the actual design on the, um, that you're like engraving into the wood or whatever material you have. There's also a score line, which is basically a single line engrave. Um, it works really well for things like I made up some coloring ornaments last year on my other diode laser and I scored those. Um, I made some keychains recently and just scored the line because scoring is so much faster than engraving. That being said, it's so much lighter. It doesn't show up nearly as well as an engraving, um, but faster, darker, I don't know, really depends on which way you wanna go. So that is an overview of the Glowforge Aura. I will do some videos on how to cut certain materials in the future, you know, how to test materials, those sorts of things. But the nice thing about the laser is that it's basically just go. I mean, it's really easy, right? You put your material in the bed, you upload your file, and it cuts it or engraves it. Cutting one material to another doesn't change that much um, if you have the settings dialed in especially, so it tends to be pretty easy to use, and this one I think is particularly easy to use. So let's talk pros and cons. 
The pros are that this is a much more affordable laser. Um, at just under $1,200, compared to something like a Glowforge, which is now going at $5,000, this is way more accessible to a larger number of crafters. The second pro is that it's a really great size for hobbyists and crafters. My Glowforge Pro is very large. Other CO2 lasers are very large. Um, this is much smaller, much more easily put in a, like a smaller space inside your house if you don't have a dedicated craft room. Um, it's just a lot more manageable than the big laser. I also think overall it's really easy to use. I mean, there's literally one button. Print, <laughs> that's it. All the settings are done within the Glowforge app, and if you're using proof grade materials, all those settings are done for you. Again, you'll have to test if you're using a non-proof grade material. But overall, really easy to use. I feel like it's a very, there's a very low barrier to entry. Um, I felt like when I first got my Glowforge, it was very overwhelming. And maybe this isn't overwhelm as overwhelming to me because I do have that big Glowforge and I have the diode laser. So I feel like my learning curve for this was non-existent. It was very easy for me to learn this. Um, but I do feel like because it's so easy to use, because you can use proof grade materials, it really is perfect for beginners. The other thing I love is this little pass-through. I think it's just a really brilliant little thing to add to it, the machine that makes it even more usable. Standard Glowforge materials come in the size of 12 by 20, um, so they wouldn't fit in the bed of this, but now I can easily use a lot of the materials I already have by sticking them through the pass-through. Um, so do stay tuned because I am gonna do a full video on how to use the pass-through probably on this machine and my Glowforge Pro. I think we're gonna tackle both in one video um, because I think it really um, increases the number of things that you can make with your machine. So let's talk cons. Obviously, this is much slower. So for example, these earrings I cut took 12 minutes here. They'd probably take two minutes on my Glowforge Pro. It's just a lot slower. Um, it's also slightly less precise, but again, like for me, this is good enough. This looks really good to me. Um, if you are like a professional laser cutter, this is probably not the machine for you where you're making, you know, incredibly precise you know, engravings. Um, but for hobbyist crafters, I think that the precision for this is just anything that you're going to need. One of the other bigger downsides is that at this time it can't cut just easily any color of acrylic. I can put any color I want in that Glowforge Pro and it will cut it, no problem. Here I'm going to have to cut and test and see what works, see what doesn't. Um, it's just going to be a little bit more of a, of a trial to try and figure out what, what I can do with it. Um, and I know I'm not going to be able to do everything with it, but you know, at like a third of the price, it's probably worth the trade-off. One other thing that's a con compared to just the other diode laser that I have, so I have an X-Tool M1, is that on the X-Tool M1, you can take the base off and you can set it up on risers so you can do thicker projects. Um, so you can engrave uh, tumblers and you can engrave uh, like the tops of wooden boxes. You can make it as high as you want if you can kind of get those risers up there. This, the bottom of this doesn't come off, so you can't do anything thick like that. So compared, comparing the two machines, I really like that the X-Tool, you can do that. Um, I do struggle more with the X-Tool though. I feel like I struggle more with getting the settings right. I struggle more with the software. Um, so yes, it's really nice to be able to have those, uh, those other capabilities. I think that that's really great. Um, but there are some trade-offs in that, that that machine is just a lot more rough um, and it doesn't feel quite as friendly to beginners as this one. So what does this machine cost? That always is what it comes down to, right? So this machine, which I got from Joanne, um, is $1,199, which is comparable to other diode lasers on the market. Um, I don't feel like that is, you know, way higher than anything else that's out there. Um, I do feel like it's a reasonable price for an entry laser. The personal filter is gonna tack on another $399. Again, that is not needed. You can always just vent it out of a window. Um, I just really like this filter actually, and I kinda wish I had one for my big machine now. I've been venting out the window, but I feel like no matter how hard I try, I can't get a really great seal, and it always ends up coming kinda back into the room. Um, I still do, when I'm running any of my uh, lasers, I use an air purifier at the same time. So I'm just running an air purifier every time I'm using my laser, just to try and keep as much of those smoke and fumes out of the air as possible. So do I recommend this machine? I do. I like it. I think it's great. I think it's a great entry laser. Um, I found it easier to start with than my M1. I found I had way fewer frustrations. I do wish it had a riser and the ability to take the bottom off so you could do those taller projects. But overall, if this is your first laser, I think this is a really great choice. Um, I think that it's small, compact. It's very user friendly. Um, I don't feel like uh, there's much of a learning curve. And I have to say that as I said, I do already have two lasers. So maybe if this was my first machine, I may have struggled a little bit more, but I mean, I opened this thing up and was cutting no problem with it, like less than an hour later, it was really quick. That being said, if you want more speed, more precision, um, those sort of more power, those sorts of things, you may wanna save up for something like a Glowforge. 
Pro or Plus. Um, I love my Glowforge Pro. It is fast. It cuts just about anything I put in there. Um, and so, you know, like, this is a great machine for beginners, and I probably will still use it, but my Glowforge Pro does a lot more, especially with clear acrylic and slightly thicker materials and those sorts of things. So it's also a lot more expensive than this machine. <laughs> it really is a trade-off. This might be a good place to start, and then you can save up your money, buy a Glowforge Plus or Pro someday, buy another type of laser. Um, but yeah, I think this is a really good entry laser, and I think you're gonna like it. If you have any questions about the Glowforge Aura, I would be happy to answer those down in the comments. If you want more information about the Glowforge Aura, you want to see upcoming videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next week.